Hey guys and welcome to part 2 of my Julep PC Compact 2 series. In this video we're going to take a closer look at the actual hardware inside of the machine. So we're going to open her up and see what's inside. Take a detailed look on some of the more interesting components in this PC. Look at the two expansion cards which were in the PC, the MFM controller card as well as the graphics card. I'll also show you some software, for example, how it's possible to load up this CGA game on this MDA setup. And we also have the occasional explosion. So let's open up the top cover here and see what we have inside. As I stated before, it's a fairly traditional layout. So we'll go ahead and remove the hard drive that caused us quite a bit of a headache in the previous video. So there's also a cable being routed to the front of the computer case for the hard drive LED. Here we have the MFM controller card with the data cable and the control cable still attached here. So this is a Western digital one. We'll take a closer look at that later. And the video card here also has a cable attached to a connector on the main board. So that's pretty odd. Never seen one of those, I think. This one contains a Yamaha chipset and is touted as being a dual graphics adapter, meaning that it not only supports text and Hercules, but it also supports CGA. Let's disconnect the high density three and a half inch disk drive here. So standard floppy cable. And then this whole area here kind of comes off. So um, both power supply, the disk drive, and the whole front panel comes off. Now, obviously, there are still some cables attached here, so we'll need to remove those first. We have the fan on the back, which is plugged into the power supply. We also have some cables here that go to the front LEDs. So this is for the power LED. This one is the PC speaker. And then we have another mystery cable here, which we'll see later. So all that's left to do now is to kind of wiggle the floppy drive cable out. Or better still, just remove it from the motherboard. Now, a lot of the PC uh, XT manufacturers, especially the branded ones like Commodore, Tulip, had these kind of onboard floppy controllers. And then, of course, we also have the power supply connector cable that we need to remove. Now, it does appear to be a standard AT style uh, pinout. There are some cables missing, but it should support most of the, the rails that you see on standard AT power supplies. And what it's also revealed now is the four AA batteries here which are hooked up to the motherboard. Now there was quite a bit of corrosion on the connector so yeah these batteries will definitely need to be replaced and possibly also the battery holder. So we'll go ahead and remove this parallel port here. And here we have the cable which is attached to the motherboard coming from the graphics card. So no idea yet what this is doing, but hopefully we'll figure out later. And here you can see that the batteries have leaked quite heavily. So fortunately they were sitting alongside the motherboard and they didn't really damage the motherboard itself. So seen a lot of cases where batteries, not necessarily these AA batteries, but batteries in general sitting in close vicinity of the motherboard can really kind of wreak havoc on the motherboard. But yeah, this is still manageable. It's kind of glued on to the chassis here with some kind of double-sided tape probably. So we'll just pry that out. And then we can go ahead and remove the motherboard from the case. So it's held into place with a couple of screws. So we'll go ahead and remove those. And then we can just slide it on outwards. So yeah, pretty nice looking motherboard. After some cleaning that is, which I did. 
But here we have it, the Tulip Computer's motherboard. It's always nice to see the manufacturer's logo on the silk screen of a PCB. And it would appear that we still have the warranty sticker attached. We have five 8-bit ISA slots for expandability. We have an onboard serial port. We have a mouse connector, keyboard connector. So it's nice to see an integrated mouse and also some I.O. with a serial port as well as a parallel port. We have the power connector for the power supply unit. It has 12 pins like most AT power supply connectors, so I'm assuming it's standard. Integrated floppy drive and also parallel port. Here we have the BIOS chip. PC BIOS version 2.0 released somewhere around April of 1988. Here we have the onboard floppy drive controller chip. And as I was filming the onboard floppy drive connector, I noticed these four tantalum capacitors of which at least two are heavily damaged and exploded. That might explain the horrible stench that I smelled when I turned on the PC for the first time. So let's try to find out how these are hooked up. Now usually these tantalum capacitors in close vicinity of the power supply connector are hooked up to the various uh, voltage rails. So we're first going to see if they are shorted. There don't appear to be any shorts. So the ground leg is on the far end side. And now we can take a look at for example, this one is on the plus 5 rail, so this one is obviously still good. This one is hooked up to the 12 volt rail, which is obviously bad, but I'm assuming that nothing on this computer is using 12 volts. Same goes for the minus 12 volts. In a lot of computers, these things fail. Um, and then we have the minus 5 volt. This one is probably also still okay, but yeah, nothing is using the minus 5 volts on this PC. We also have an MTIC socket here, marked mouse. And this was actually an optional feature to have uh, Microsoft bus mouse support via this connector here between the serial port and the keyboard connector. Now, obviously, you can still use the serial port to hook up a mouse, but if you wanted to use that bus mouse connector, this chip needed to be fitted and probably fitted at the factory because this was an official option on this Tulip Compact PC. Over here we have some RAM, so the computer comes with 640 kilobytes of RAM. So that's eight 256 kilobit chips on each bank. And the brains of the computer here is this NEC V20 processor. Now this is a very popular upgrade path for lots of XT-based computers that normally have to do with an 8088 running at something like 4 megahertz. Now this one is clocked at 9.54 megahertz, I think. Now this won't double the performance, but it will give you a noticeable performance boost. There's no Math Co Pro installed. But then again, not that many software makes use of a MathCo Pro. But you do have the option to upgrade one. And to complete the tour, we have this Faraday FE2010 chip, which has the clock generator, the DMA channels, as well as the interrupts. So overall, a nice little XT-based board. But now time to take a look at the expansion cards. And we'll start with this Western Digital 1002A dash wx1 which is the mfm controller card used to hook up the hard drive now this is a very versatile little card you can hook up to two drives on it it has excellent support it has a built-in low level format routine excellent card this one only supports the mfm encoding so you can't hook up an rll encoded drive on this thing but most of the hard drives are mfm anyway so you can hook up two MFM ST506 or 412 drives on this thing and it supports a maximum of 16 heads and 1024 cylinders. You also have some jumpers here that you can set to specify the geometry of the drive depending on the BIOS which is included on this card. Now the chip that you see here starting with 62 is actually the Super BIOS included on this MFM controller. It supports stuff like formatting bad tracks, dual controller operation, automatic configuration of hard drives, virtual drive operation and even PCAT compatibility. 
Next card we want to discuss is the graphics card, which is kind of Tulip branded here. At least it has a sticker. It comes with a parallel port, a, a standard 9-pin D-sub connector, and it also has this switch to change the uh, card from monochrome to color mode. More on that later. Now this card features a Yamaha chip, which makes it both MDA, Hercules, and CGA compatible. And depending on the status of this switch, you will either set it to uh, monochrome, so that means MDA Hercules, or color mode, which means CGA mode or CGA emulation mode. So the card came with this cable, which is attached from the graphics adapter onto the motherboard. So I wasn't really sure what the goal of this thing was, but I ended up measuring it and uh, it actually takes the input from this switch and puts that on the motherboard. So obviously this informs the motherboard, kind of the mode of operation of this graphics card. And it will probably uh, configure the PC BIOS to either set it to uh, MDA Hercules or some kind of CGA mode. So that's why you need to have this cable attached to the motherboard. And next up we have the hard drive, the Seagate ST125MFM hard drive. Now this is one of those 3.5 inch MFM hard drives. They're not the most reliable ones. Please check out the first part of this video series to get some more information on the hard drive. But yeah, I really like the design of this thing. I like the color, I like the PCB beneath here. Uh, I think it's a really cool little MFM hard drive. I mean, I'm used to working with these big MFM 20 megabyte hard drives. So this is one of the few three and a half inch ones that I have, which are actually working. And just listen to the sound of this one. Just lovely. On to the battery pack. Now I already noticed that on the connector that there was a lot of corrosion and if you just look at the battery connectors here, yeah, so that's what you get when you have 30 year old batteries sitting in a computer I guess. So yeah, we can remove them from the pack. Now uh, normally I would just buy a new battery pack but I didn't have one here and it's not actually my PC so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of money on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, if you really want to do it uh, yourself, you can use some vinegar and try to get the corrosion off, which I'm going to do here, just taking a toothbrush and soaking it in some vinegar. And then as you start scrubbing along the connectors, you will immediately see the, the vinegar kind of sizzling and eating away on that corrosion. So after cleaning it up, you just, just need to search for the polarity of the battery connector. So finding ground is easy enough. And it also helps that there is a pin which is removed from this connector so that you're unable to uh, attach it in the wrong way. So we're just going to hook it up to the motherboard and that should make sure that our CMOS settings are properly saved and survive reboots. And what I want to show you now was this uh, graphics adapter, the dual graphics adapter with this little switch here and what it does exactly. So when you start the PC and you launch something like Check It, you will see that it will detect the graphics adapter as being an MDA style video adapter, which makes sense. I mean, this is a monochrome green phosphor monitor. And with that, you will be able to play uh, Hercules uh, compatible games. But CGA games, for example, Alley Cat, will not run and it will give you this message that you need to have a color display. And the same goes for a game like Arkanoid, which doesn't have a Hercules compatible mode and only has CGA, EGA or VGA support. Now flipping the switch also isn't an option because this will just simply distort the screen which is on the monitor, so we need to do something else. Now I do want to point out that some games that do support Hercules mode, like for example this uh, Grand Prix Circuit game, does actually run fine on this MDA based setup. And that's just because this computer has full Hercules support. So you can play any uh, game that supports uh, Hercules graphics mode.
But in order to run CGA-based games, you need to go into the Diagnostics menu via the Diagnostics disk. And on that, you have a video configuration option, which is currently set to Hercules mode. Now, what we can do is we can set it to CGA emulation, and this will allow the system to run in a CGA emulation mode on MDA Hercules-based uh, hardware. So that means that with this uh, video card, which is also capable of outputting uh, CGA, um, but the monitor isn't able to accept CGA signals, so we need to run it in CGA emulation. For that, we need to turn off the computer, flip the switch, and then restart. And at that point, if we load up Check It, for example, we will see that it will detect the video adapter as being CGA as opposed to MDA like it did before. And from that point, you can run CGA-based games like this Alley Cat here, which normally only runs on CGA hardware. But thanks to the CGA emulation, we can enjoy this title on this system. Now, whether or not this is better than Hercules mode, I'll leave it to you to decide. For example, this is Grand Prix Circuit in CGA mode. So obviously this is CGA emulation without colors. So if we compare it to Hercules mode, which looks like this, actually the Hercules mode is a lot higher in terms of resolution. So you can clearly uh, see the difference here. The colors are also quite different. And you can also use the diagnostic disk to set up the color emulation so that you can actually configure the 16 CGA color palette here. So here you have the Dutch translation of the different colors and you can assign them with a certain shade of green in this case. And one final thing I want to note is that while I was making this video, this happened. So I was right in the middle of filming everything when this thing just basically exploded. Let's see it in slow motion. So yeah, not, not good. Not something you want while you're making a video. So to continue, I decided to hook up a standard AT power supply, which is pin compatible. The power connector didn't really fit 100%, but as, at least I was able to continue. And I will take a look at this power supply to see if I can fix it. But I hope you've enjoyed part two of this video to look at some of the internals of this really nice little PC. I hope to see you guys in a future video. If you like this one, please consider giving it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye-bye.